Hello guys and gals, Jay here, and right now I am solo. That's right, it's just me, but no worries, uh, you're going to hear the guys. So, you know, I know if they're your favorite and I'm not, it, it's all good, you're going to hear them. Uh, Stu and I have a great interview with uh, Jan Lucanis Jr. and Sr. So, well, good, we won't keep you guys too awful long, we just, uh, we really wanted to get back in touch with you, we uh, wanted to, we'll get an update on things that have been going on, but we also wanted to talk to you guys um, about push hands. Well, first off, how do we? Uh, do you want us to dress each other? Uh, I know Jan, but he's Mr. Childress, I guess. <laughs> oh, you can say Jan Senior if you want to distinguish between the two of us. That'll work. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> can we just say like That's what the team does? Number one, number two, <laughs> one, or will you guys fight one. over who's number one? <laughs> oh, yeah, we fight over that and push hands, absolutely. <laughs> like I said, we uh, we definitely want to get an update on some of the things that have been going on, but one of the main reasons we wanted to call today was to talk to you about push hands, something you guys had mentioned in the past. Um, now, I'm sure a lot of people out there are like, hey, what the heck is push hands? Um, so why don't we start by having you guys uh, tell the folks at home exactly what it is? Uh, sure. If you, if you think about um, Tai Chi, uh, and you think about Tai Chi in terms of fighting, the actual practice of Tai Chi is uh, similar in concept to assembling a weapon, uh, putting the parts together, the parts in this case being the mind, the body, and spirit, coordinating them and uh, directing the movement in, in a choreographed manner that mimics fighting techniques. Qi Kung, the second phase, is arming the weapon, that is, uh, giving it ammunition, in this case, uh, Qi, the body's uh, internal energy, Qi as well as uh, awareness, awareness of yourself and awareness of your opponent. So with uh, Tai Chi and Qi Kung, you've got the weapon and you've got it armed. Uh, push hands is the um, execution, the firing of the weapon at a target. And that's where all of the coordinated movements and the use of the chi and the deployment of your awareness of yourself and your opponent come into play. Okay. So the three taken together form a complete uh, unit. I, 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 I mean, everything Dad said is absolutely spot on. And the way that we play the, um, you know, it's played various ways in the States and overseas. You know, in our experience, uh, some of the, the best uh, competitors in the world are out in Taiwan, and uh, the World Cup's out there, for, uh, which actually just happened last weekend. Um, and the way, it's, uh, the way it's played out there is it's pretty much Greco-Roman wrestling in a ring, and you either push the guy out of the ring or throw him on the floor. And that's, that's called the moving step. Then you have a big step, and it's, you know, your feet are on elevated platforms, and Someone says go, and that's a gun game. And someone, uh, you know, one opponent tries to push the other off the platform. Whoever does, whoever uh, picks up their foot first or falls, uh, loses the point. So when you watch it, it when you watch it, it kind of uh, you got a ring, kind of like what what you. This is from what I've watched, kind of like what you would see in sumo. And I would guess, I would assume you want to stay inside the ring. You don't want to go outside. Is that correct or? Yeah. Absolutely. That, that's the moving step. Again, like, uh, you know, in the States, they do fixed step, uh, restricted step, which is kind of like fencing, oh, wow. and then moving step. And then overseas, it's it, it, at least in uh, at the World Cup, it's simply fixed step and moving step. And, uh, you know, the fixed step is, is, a, is a, <clears throat> like a gun game of uh, explosive space manipulation. And the, uh, the moving step takes that and makes it mobile and... Uh, you know, again, it has a lot of elements of, of Greco, of, of sumo, and, uh, you know, the, the really cool stuff that I love about push hands, but it's just a lot of the, the, joint, uh, the, the joint pressures and being able to, you know, throw guys with just by holding their arm in awkward ways. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, now, when it comes to Tai Chi as an art, I think a lot of people have the wrong idea. I mean, it, you talk to people, they see it. They see Tai Chi as simple movements and, and graceful and everything, but they, I think sometimes they miss the, the martial arts aspect. Can, can you guys enlighten them on maybe the history and the effectiveness of Tai Chi? Well, actually, <clears throat> Tai Chi was, was actually, actually grew out of the uh, Taoist monks' search for the uh, fountain of youth, the key to immortality. What they ended up doing was 
in their search of studying uh, nature and studying the cyclicality of nature, whether it's the uh, uh, revolution of the uh, seasons or the simple path that energy takes uh, in the form of uh, wind or water. It, it invariably moves in a circular fashion. They studied, um, they studied the animals, they studied the trees, they studied the atmosphere, they studied, uh, you could say they studied uh, heaven and earth and all in between. What they came up with was a uh, technology for longevity, which uh, in, in the broadest sense is Qigong, which includes um, uh, Tai Chi, what we traditionally know as Qigong, and uh, push hands. So it was originally a technology for, for longevity. And uh, <clears throat> longevity meant two things. It meant uh, uh, preserving your, um, your good health, the strength and balance of your organs, the uh, same with the mind, the healthy mind. But it also meant having the skills to uh, protect yourself in the face of danger. Brigands were very much a uh, threat. Invaders uh, were very much a threat. So it was very necessary for the wandering Taoists to be able to protect themselves on the road. The martial aspects really grow out of the search for uh, immortality. So does it work? <laughs> I mean, do you, does it does it uh, does it help with longevity? I mean, you <clears throat> you see a lot of people doing it, and you see a lot of uh, older folks doing it, which is which seems to be nice. You know, I, I've talked to my mom before. She has um, she has problems with uh, movement restriction, and I, I've talked to some people, and they said it might actually help her a little. So, I mean, does do you guys find that it works? That it does, in fact, help people. I very definitely do. Most of my students at the teach at the 92nd Street Y in um, New York City. Most of my students are, are older students, and I had a student who was, you know, she was 84, and um, I watched her over the years um, just seem to grow younger. She did the Tai Chi on a daily basis. He had gone to see her physician and had taken a test of the capacity of her lungs. And he was a little concerned uh, because she had lost a lot of the uh, strength in her lungs. But he said at her age, uh, it would never improve, so nothing to worry about. Well, a year later, it uh, definitely did improve, and uh, quite significantly. That was due to the uh, Tai Chi. So it does help. It helps with uh, balance. It helps, and it strengthens the organs. It certainly does, uh, I think, add years to your life if you practice it diligently. And it's it's a really it's a really gorgeous thing to watch too. That's why I said I think a lot of people get the wrong idea because that's the only side they see. You know, we see movies and and things like that, and we see people practicing Tai Chi and. Again, I think people forget that it's it's a martial art. I think a lot of people overlook that fact, but it's a gorgeous thing to watch. It really is, and it's been one of those things that for years I've thought to myself, you know, it would be interesting to to take that up, um, just as a, a way to kind of center yourself and and to relax yourself. I think it would be nice. So, um, well, Tai Chi Zero hits theaters today. So, I mean, that, not that that's a, an accurate representation of what we do, but I'm excited about that. Um, you know, and, and I, I, just from a, a martial standpoint, you know, it's, I think that there's a, there's so much more for Tai, so much more room for Tai Chi to grow, uh, in addition to how the longevity that it promotes. I mean, it's, it's definitely a, a martial art. And I think that's one of the things that gets, uh, overlooked a lot. Right. <clears throat> um, well, let's talk about the tournament scene, uh, as far as push hand goes, you guys are both kind of, uh, kind of uh, awesome in the <laughs> as far as it goes you guys have both kind of risen to become two of the highest ranking competitors uh in your weight classes in the united states is that correct that is correct uh can you tell us a little bit about the tournaments you fought in and, and some of the titles you guys have held um uh, sure i mean well dad and i dad's been competing uh you know since i was little uh in tai chi so and you know across the board so i uh I grew up going to to some of the the meets with him, the the, the martial arts meets, and and uh, I think there was a 
Yeah, I can can give you more details on on some of the scene in, in Virginia. I believe it was uh, uh, when I was younger. But uh, you know, in the recent years, probably '04, I, Dad and I got recruited onto the um, onto William C. C. Chen's team by Josh Waitskin. And Josh was uh, you know, the the subject of the movie uh, Searching for Bobby Fischer. Wow. And you know, he's a little chess champion, and and he grew up and moved on to, to Tai Chi, and kind of took a lot of his his perspective of uh of chess and strategy and, and applied it to uh you know the push hands game and you know dad and i had dad has been a practitioner you know since my for my entire life and and i've you know got really serious about tai chi when i was 16 so uh if it wasn't for tai chi i went to fought sancho uh when i was 18 and and if it wasn't for that, that type of fight mentality i wouldn't have wanted to get back into the push hand scene in 04 and dad and i jumped back on the circuit and uh you know, did a Nick Screamers event in Florida, and I pulled onto Josh's team, and I think that was primarily because of the way that we viewed push hands as a competition, as a fight, rather than as the the way it's been viewed in the states um, as an energy exercise. And a fight is an energy exercise, you know. Right. So it's 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 just a different perspective, and you know we go. Our team in general goes a little bit harder than most of the, the teams that we come in contact with here in the states, and it's um, I, I, there's there's just a lot of room uh, again for Tai Chi to grow as a, as a competitive sport because it's it's a, a lot of fun. There's a great uh, philosophy behind it, but it's also incredibly martial. And it, you know, here in the states, you have again the uh, the fixed step, which has a the U.S. rules for fixed step and, uh, are slightly different than Taiwan. It's, uh, in the U.S., it's normally a little bit toned down, even down to the moving step, uh, even down to the round durations, where in Taiwan you're going for, for two two to three-minute rounds. And, you know, here in the States, you're doing, you could be doing a, a moving step round of one minute. And, you know, you're not really training the uh, the athleticism that the sport deserves. And if you go and look at these guys out in Taiwan, the stuff that they're doing uh, the top team out there, uh, 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 the, the top competitor, uh, uh, Chun Chun, uh, Chun, uh, uh, we call him Tui Shao, but, uh, you know, this, this is an 11-year reigning world champion, 11, wow. 11 time reigning world champion at the World Cup. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's it's what what they're doing out there. We went had the opportunity to go out to the school and train with the Taiwan's top team and to see that they're pushing 250-pound bags of rocks and that they have weights all across their – their uh, massive garage, you know, farm garage that they've turned into this this incredible Tai Chi college out there. And, um, you know, they're definitely treating it as a world-class competitive uh, collegiate sport. So, you know, the, the, the scene out here, and Dad can, can dive much deeper than, than I can, and maybe you can edit my, <laughs> what I'm saying right now. Uh, but uh, it's it's the overseas Taiwan competitive scene, uh you know, the the Chen Village China outside of the United States is played much more competitively, much harder and much more as a martial art than it is here in the States. And there has been a, a movement to change that, uh, but we want to see that movement uh, uh, continue. Yeah, I think we find that a lot, though, with, with um, certain styles of arts that outside of the, the, the U.S., they tend to take them a little more seriously than they do here sometimes. And I don't know if that's a... I don't know what that's all about. I, you know, I, I think until recently that a lot of martial arts had like a stigma attached to them with the United people in the United States. They see, again, they see them, you know, you talk to people and everybody says to this day, we take JKD and people are like, so you got your karate class tonight? I'm like, no, I, I, I don't take karate. I haven't since I was 19. People don't always understand that. So well, it's, you, definitely, it's definitely a house of cards, right? Uh, you know, I, I, because I, you know, I've had interactions with, uh, with guys, you know, other teachers that we've competed against, that we've beaten, and you know, getting emails from these guys asking me why I'm putting up a video of us, uh, you know, competing against them in a tournament, and of course they're contacting me because they're scared that their students are going to see this, see them lose, and then not want to be their students anymore. <laughs> and it's 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 that type of. Um, you know, it's that type of mentality that, that keeps a lot of these martial arts, especially, you know, just from our experience, Tai Chi, uh, it keeps it stagnant. 
And, you know, if I have no problem getting beaten. Like, you know, I got beaten for the gold at the, uh, the, the World Cup in 2010. You know, I got silver out there. I got beat by one point, which, you know, is arguable. But the bottom line is I got beaten. I have to learn from that experience. Sure. You know, and I I have no problem getting punched in the face in, in a in a fight because I'm going to learn from that experience. So you're you're not getting a lot of Tai Chi guys with that mentality. You're getting a you know you're getting a different mentality, and it's um, you know, we 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 hope to change that. Now you had mentioned uh, Grandmaster William C C Chen. Are you guys still a part of his team? We are. We um, still practice uh, with the team. Um, for me, I've been practicing less this year than I have in, in recent years. I really pick it up whenever we're heading into tournament season. But, yeah, we, we still are very much a part of their team. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys should watch out for uh, Jordan Forth as well, who's uh, on the team, is, is probably going to be one of the next top competitors in the, in the world. Uh, so uh, Google him online and check out some of his stuff, too. Now, now, can you guys give, uh, explain how the competition works, like the rules and points and all that? I know you said they're a little different uh, in the United States, but <clears throat> how do they? How do they? You know, how do you win? What what kind of point system or rule system do they set up? Uh, very basically, in, in fixed step, if you if you uh, pick up your foot or or you're otherwise moved moved off of your uh, set position. Other than pivoting, you can pivot on the heel, toe, or ball of your foot uh, as you're executing the move. But if you're otherwise moved from that position or thrown to the mat uh, by your opponent, then that's a point for the opponent. Uh, generally speaking, it's one point if you're moved off your position. It's two points if you're thrown to the to the mat. And that's that's consistently how it works in Taiwan. It's not always sometimes in in the United States, you get one point no matter what, whether you're thrown to the mat or you're just uh, pushed off of your position. The, the big difference between Taiwan and the United States is that is the way the, the match begins. In, in the United States, they will have you circle. You, you basically start off uh, um, right wrist to right wrist or left wrist to left wrist. And the other hand is on your opponent's elbow, and from that position, you and you're very you're very close. You're in each other's space. Your feet, front feet, are um, parallel. Start with your right foot forward, faces. So your feet are going to be right next to one another, and you're to remain in contact throughout the match. But they'll have you start off circling, moving back and forth three times softly, and then they will ask you to start fighting, but they want you to move a little softly uh, for an undetermined amount of time before you actually start, and that's where it really gets fuzzy with the rules. Taiwan is a lot more straightforward. You're, uh, you start off in the same way, wrist to wrist, hand on the elbow. As soon as the ref drops his hand, you guys explode. It is truly an explosion. Most of the points are scored within a uh, second, if not uh, a fraction of a second. Wow. Um, it is uh, a very subtle, albeit quick, uh, execution of uh, movement in, uh, as practiced in Taiwan. Much prefer uh, Taiwan over, over the United States. And again, because in Taiwan it's a lot less... Uh, Objective. As soon as that ref's hands go down, you explode, and somebody's going to be moved off of. Yeah, I've uh, I've watched a couple videos of you guys actually, and I'm assuming all the ones I've seen were in Taiwan because um, you weren't fixed uh, to one spot. And and I have a question about that. Um, Probably most are actually in the states. Uh, if, if, unless you saw big crowds, uh, the, the big crowds are in Taiwan. Well, I heard the uh, there was an uh, there was an announcer in the background, and they were not speaking English. So I'm not, I don't know if. Uh, <laughs> plus, you were in the ring and you were moving around inside the ring, and that's actually where my question came from. Um, you know, there's the rings behind you, and I and I'm, I was actually watching you, um, uh, Jan Junior, um, and. It's behind you. You can't see it, and you're moving backwards. And right before your body, right before you cross the line, your whole body stopped like you hit a wall. How did you know 
that you were about to go. I mean, you physically stopped before you went outside that ring. How in the world did you do that? Well, we train ring awareness. And, you know, there's a whole, uh, you know, our, 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 our collective has just a whole way to train, uh, you know, for, for these competitions. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do our four hour drill sessions on, on Sundays and, and, you know, hit it hard for the rest of the week. And, you know, it's, it's a, a few month process to, to get to the level where you can compete for the, uh, the World Cup. So, you know, a, a lot of the tournaments that you'll see online were us preparing for the 2010 World Cup. Uh, and, you know, doing those drills and, uh, we, uh, Tai Chi is an incredible, again, it's an incredible technology. And, you know, there, there are some things that you've heard about or, or you, you, you see and they're, they're hocus pocus, hocus pocus, you know, sure. it's, it's, it's a trickery. Uh, and, you know, it's not real, but then there are other things that are absolutely, you know, in your face real. And some of that, some of that is, is being able to just root yourself on, you know, in an instant, uh, you know, my, when in, when competing against other martial arts, you know, uh, the guys that I train with, myself, Dad, and you know our team, we're really hard to throw, and because we practice rooting, but we and we, we do rooting drills to to drop all of our weight into one foot into one side of our body, uh, you know, in an instant. So, uh, and take whatever pressure that you know a 300 pound dude is putting on us because we do train with guys of that size. And be able to t- turn that guy and throw him out of the ring rather than be thrown out of the ring. You know, one of the toughest guys on our team, a guy named Khan Kanzaki, is the Khan. Yeah, what, what is Khan? Like a buck forty-three? Yeah. Yeah. So Khan is like this. You know, he's a sh- he's a short uh, Hawaiian Japanese skinny guy, and he's one of the strongest people I've ever met, I've ever encountered in, in the ring. And that's because he's doing these exercises and. And and it's not just the exercise, the physical exercise. It's the awareness that you put on every bone in your body and your opponent's body. Because when you touch your opponent, he becomes part of you. And you know, taking that into consideration, you can move your body wherever you want it. So if I want to put my opponent's body on the ground, you know that's going to happen. And by by you know willpower and technique. So. You know, training those, uh, doing these drills, training that willpower, and training those techniques. Yeah, it was an amazing thing to watch. I, like I said, I literally watched you. You know, without looking, without seeing, it. It, it was like you sensed that you were getting close to that line. You, your whole body came to a sudden stop. This was a. Uh, I, I want to say, I was watching some videos to, earlier today, and I want to say this was probably around 2009, somewhere in there. I'm not 100 percent positive, but. You you did you came to a sudden stop like you knew if you took another half a step back you would have been out of the uh, out of the ring and and then you took this guy down to the to the mat like it was like like you just knew what was going on so it was pretty amazing to watch like you said the awareness that you have of the ring itself and 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 where your place is and your position that's something I think a lot of guys uh, who fight in in various forms could probably benefit from from learning is awareness of their surroundings it was it was pretty amazing so. You know, anytime we train with other martial arts, we end up, you know, setting up a, a push hands uh, session with them or a, a regular push hands session. You know, in in, in New York, uh, New York Sanda, we were doing push hands for a while with their uh, MMA team because uh, they were getting something from it. Right. You know, it, it's uh, you know, I, I'm out here in LA right now and I'm doing uh, uh you know, playing push hands with a uh, uh, Sam who was on the last call. Uh, you know, he's an incredible KKD instructor and uh, some of his guys and, and they see the benefit of uh, I mean, the the amount of core strength that you get if, from this stuff, it's it's unlike anything else, and you know, and that's just one of the ma- massive benefits that you get from from training this way. Um, now, you also practice something called San Shu, correct? Am I am I saying that correctly? Uh, I used to fight San. Uh, some some people say San Shu, some people say San Sao, some people San say Sancho. I used to I call it Sancho. So I Sancho. Uh, I. Uh, Fought on Li Tai Lang's team, who was uh, the big Beijing coach for Sancho. He had a New York international team that uh, that uh, I competed for a spot on in, in 2000 and and, uh, and fought for him for uh, about five fights. And uh, and we all we got a chance to fight the the Beijing Pro Sancho team, which was great. So, how many different forms have you guys dabbled in then, or is that a loaded question? <laughs> how many different forms? Yeah, of uh, martial arts. Uh, I had I started out studying uh, Shaolin Kung Fu, okay. and from there went on to 
Tai Chi. So with Kung Fu, I studied um, um, Northern Style, Praying Mantis, a little bit of Wing Chun, and uh, of course the Shaolin Kung Fu, and went on to Tai Chi and studied uh, Yang, Wu, and Chen Style, and also a more esoteric style called uh, Loha Bapha. Also did Ping Yi. And Jan has studied uh, some other forms or styles. Yeah, a bunch of Kung Fu under under Dad. And uh, I used to train with uh, at the USA Shaolin Temple, which was uh, uh, an incredible experience just in terms of the discipline. And, uh, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with John Machado uh, and, uh, and Josh, Josh uh, and, and Mar- Marcelo Garcia all opened their own school. So uh, Dan Caulfield as well, uh, uh, his Aikido and and Tai Chi combination, and uh, yeah, just a, a bunch of great, great guys. Boxing, you know, we we do our best. Uh, right now, I'm in JKD uh, with Sam Levine, and uh, it's you know, do our best to kind of just stay open minded and, and continue to learn. But uh, Tai Chi is my favorite sport in the world. Push hands, and I, I, I think that um, you know, I honestly think that it's going to be integrated into every school, uh, you know, a few years down the line. Tai Chi and push hands, and it's uh, it's. It helps me in business. It helps me in, in, in every aspect of life. And uh, uh, because of the philosophies at, at its core, and I think that if we can continue to elevate the art, you know, we're going to uh, – people are going to take Tai Chi and apply it to all of their art forms and, and sports. You know, there's a Dr. Huang, uh, who is, is pretty much at the head of the extreme push hands movement here in the States, uh, which saw some – had some exposure during Nick Screamer's uh, tournament in 2010 – Dr. Huang is a, a you know high level uh, Tai Chi practitioner at push hands, and he uh, his son Tim Huang is a former football player, and you know this guy uh, uh, you know he, he's a really great push hands practitioner, and, and just started uh, I think he had his white belt in judo, and I, th- I believe he's gotten his black belt you know it, it, just from beating the black belts in, in Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh. Um, event earlier this year at the uh, I forgot the, uh, what they call his event, Arnold, uh, his fighting event earlier this year. The, yeah, the classic. So yeah. you know he, he went down there, you know, uh, honorary guest, and and he, he's Tim has been tearing up the scene, the judo scene, using t- uh, extreme push hand. There's actually a a, a film on uh, on YouTube of uh, me competing against and losing to uh, Tim in the uh, first extreme. Martial art, uh, push hands ornament in the United States that Jan referred to. And we were doing moving step. Yeah, it's and, a... and we're going to rectify that in the next couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> All in good spirit and good fun because we want to elevate the sport. And again, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's great getting beaten. It's good yeah, because you really have good. to, you have to learn, you know, and if you're scared to get beaten. You know, it's, 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 it's going to make your, your, your path. It's going to halt you on the path of growing as a, as a, as a person. <laughs> Not just a martial artist. Yeah, if I wasn't afraid of getting beaten, I would never show up to class because half the guys I train with can take me down, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's definitely a learning when, experience. When Dad and I joined Josh's team, uh, you know, and our level of physical conditioning was at an incredibly high level when we joined. We had actually just finished shooting the first Justice for Hire, like, short film. <laughs> this was years ago. And so, you know, we had all trained for it, and, and we had gone back into the tournament circuit because we were in such good shape, and we might as well use it to fight. And we uh, we consistently got our asses handed to us for, yeah, was it like three months before yeah. we got a throw on, on, on anybody? Uh it was a it was a while, and we literally, you know, we learned to love falling because we got slammed into the mat so many times. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, we experienced that too. <laughs> I I find it to be like I said. This is uh to be honest, this is my first um, this is the first I've actually heard about this. Was talking to you before on the show and uh, watching the videos and stuff. Like I said, it would be a really interesting thing to integrate uh, into our training. Uh, it, it, like Stu and I were talking about it, and it's, I said it's, it's got like elements of sumo and elements of like standing judo, like things I've never seen before. It's it's uh, locks and takedowns that I've never really witnessed before. It would be a really cool thing to integrate, I think. And that's you know that's what we live for. We love to integrate different things into our style. 
So it's 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 a pretty cool thing to watch. I highly recommend everybody. All you got to do is um, Google push hands and uh, put in Tai Chi push hands and videos pop up and you can actually watch it. And, and you guys are in quite a few of them. So um, I highly recommend that to anyone out there. Now, uh, where where can people find out more about push hands? Uh, I, I would say Google. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, Dad, do you know any any real forums? I mean, uh, you know, we we've, we've been pushing on our side to just starting to compile videos from from around the world and uh, from around our, our own tournament experiences and putting them out there. But uh, I don't know of any real forum uh, that's. It's not gossip written. I mean, that's actually yeah. simple and clear about the sport of uh, of push hands and and how it's how it's different across the globe. Um, I know Brazil has a a pretty talented scene, and Italy is supposed to be uh, has, is supposed to have a pretty talented scene as well. So, uh, Dad, do you know it? No, I don't. And I think your suggestion of googling it, uh, going on YouTube, looking at some of the videos, I think that would be helpful in acquainting any newcomer to what push hands is all about. Of course, there's nothing, nothing like actually experiencing it, but uh, that'll give you some flavor. Yeah, this is another problem we've run into. Um, one of the things we practice is uh, Savat, which I'm sure you've done, awesome. uh, done a little bit of, yeah. And we actually interviewed, uh, one of our first interviews here on the show was um, Professor Salim Asli. And um, being that Savat is, you know, it's it's a French art and it's not it's huge in other countries but here in america when i tell people yeah i love savat they're like what what's savat and it's the same problem uh, it again it happens all the time in, in america they know karate they know and even then if you if you throw a different style it's, people tell me yeah i you know, took karate when I was a kid and i say oh what style what do you mean i'm like well there's shonenru karate which is what i took there's washenru karate and people are like they just look at you like what that's that's again. It's an American thing, man. They 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 learn a little bit, but they don't ever go in depth on anything. And uh, I'm glad to see that there are people out there trying to change that. Um, that's one of the things we try to get across here. You know, we talk a lot of MMA on this show, um, but it's nice to get into traditional art forms every once in a while. It's it's uh, it's it's kind of what you we know, do. I, I would encourage everybody to, uh, <clears throat> especially anyone who does the grappling arts, to to. Whether it's Nick Screamer's tournament at the you know ICMACs, the International Chinese Martial Arts Championships, or uh, anywhere else that you find across the states, but if you're a grappler, go into these Tai Chi tournaments and experience it. You know, go into the push hand tournaments and do your, you know go in there and, with the intention of kicking these Tai Chi guys' asses. Like, do it, <laughs> and because what's going to do? It's going to make the community uh, step up their game. And there's some great guys that are, that are out there, but there needs to be more, and it needs to be more martial. And if we if we get grapplers to come in, judo guys to come in, I mean, you know, uh, Tim Huang is doing a great job by going into the judo scene. Max Chen, who's a William C.C. Chen son, is doing a phenomenal job by, you know, going pro in Muay Thai. He's a pro Muay Thai fighter, and he's a Tai Chi practitioner. You know, these guys are uh, there. Are tons of Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys, and Josh and Josh Waitzkin and Dan Caulfield are, are two of them that are you know Tai Chi based, and you know it's expanding slowly but surely. But you know, we want to make sure that the the art uh, the art remains you know at its core the philosophy that it is, uh, which is just you know, so spiritually fulfilling. But simultaneously, it just it needs to be taken to a martial place, and uh, for for the sport to evolve here in the states, and and you know anybody who is ready, willing, and able, check them out. Check out a tournament if, if there's one in your town, city, or or somewhere nearby, and and uh, and go have some fun. Uh, you know, it's all in good fun. Um. So let's for just a minute before we let you guys off here, let's talk about the creative end of things. Uh, you guys have been up to a lot lately, so can you guys fill us in? on maybe some JFH stuff and also uh, some of the new projects you got going on in the works because I've uh, gotten some emails and I've been following you on Facebook, so I know you guys got some things a-brewing. Yeah, we, we just, uh, uh, the preliminary first draft of the upcoming Justice for Hire feature is is done. Uh, Dad is, is and two of our other writers are taking their cracks at it uh, now. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have something uh so before the end of October, so that's like the official first draft, and and uh, so that's 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 going. And 
going really well. Uh, we just put out Bardo Compendium. For, uh, this is all for, uh, under the Creative Impulse Entertainment banner, uh, for, for those of you who don't know, and that's our, 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 our uh, transmedia company. And uh, we just put out Bardo Compendium, which is a, uh, a continuation of a, 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 one of the comics that we released uh, called Bardo about the unraveling of consciousness after death, uh, 15-year-old boy's uh, journey through the unraveling of consciousness after death. And uh, what else do we have coming out? Uh, we have something called Christopher Brown coming out from a, a great uh, writer, artist named Kevin Thomas, who we've done work before on or with. And uh, Kevin actually was the lead artist on Dad's Durga the Geomancer, which is uh, one of our top-selling titles. So I think I believe it's our top-selling Creative Impulse title, actually. And uh, so Kevin's a, a, an incredible talent, and this is his first um, his first solo project that we're putting out. So, uh, you know, across the board, you know, we have some uh, some new videos that are coming out as well and and some interesting stuff on the uh, the music side that we just announced with uh, with Paul Scholl, who's, uh, you know, one of the biggest music managers in North America. We're doing a, a partnership with him and his Mr. Butterscotch um, lifestyle brand to highlight new uh, music artists that are uh, – that are on the scene that we know or that we've we've seen perform or heard their their music or somehow people that are are new up and coming that should be supported. We That's want awesome. to support the, the you know the, the next generation of artists and uh, so just a bunch of great initiatives and and you know, 2013 is going to be a justice for hire year. So it's a, it's just a bunch of great stuff going on across the board. And uh, Comicsology, that's where I get my justice for hire at, so I recommend that to everyone. I actually read that you guys, uh, that uh, JFH was one of the most downloaded uh, uh, comics on Comicsology. Is that true? It is one of the uh, uh, one of the martial arts genre's uh, top downloads, yeah. And actually, it stayed, uh, stayed at number one for like, I don't even know, like uh, 12 straight weeks uh, wow. when, when we first launched. So you know, Comicsology's been... Um, continually expanding but it's also been expanding the uh, the reach of justice for hire so so yeah we're one of the most downloaded uh martial arts comics out there and um you guys also have the uh the the series on youtube that people can go watch i've watched those as well so you guys are out there um everybody we if if you guys missed it go back and listen to the episode we where we talked to all all of you guys it was a whole bunch of them all at one time here on the show and we we talked all about Justice for Hire, so if anybody out there listening missed that episode, go up and find it. Um, uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's just labeled as Justice for Hire, so it won't be hard to find, but I highly recommend that. But again, we wanted to have you and your, your dad on the show mainly to talk about push hands, and, and uh, like I said, it's a new thing for me, so it was a, it was a good thing to experience and to talk about. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, where can they find you guys? Maybe they can just ask ask you guys directly because you seem to be the experts around here. Uh, you can go right to the Creative Impulse Entertainment website. You can go to justiceforhire.com. Uh, you can Google Justice for Hire, Google Creative Impulse Entertainment, publishing, music, films, whatever you want to put on the end of that Creative Impulse tag. Uh, you, know, you can look up Dad online, uh, Jan C. Childress. You can look up me online, Jan Lucanis. Uh, and you, you'll be able to find us. We're we're out there. So uh, we're and we're very easily accessible. <laughs> so you know, just, just shoot us an email. Hit us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, via the website. Uh, you know, we're 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 uh, we're around. And you know, I, again, you know, everything with on the push hand side. We want we want the art to advance. And uh, yeah, we we have a great deal of respect for everybody, every promoter that's helping to expand the um, you know Tai Chi's reach and and. Uh, and you know across the globe, so we're, we're thankful for uh, for Nick Screma's efforts on, on ICMAC, for for Dr. Huang's efforts on the extreme push hands, for uh, you know the the, the Chenghua, uh Cup in 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 Thailand, Taiwan, and uh, you know Tui Shao, uh, Chen Zhichun, and uh, and Mavis, and the whole family out in, in Taiwan. So you know it's just a, a wonderful international network of, uh, of practitioners. I also have a, a website. It's net. Audience can feel free to go and visit that website as well. Yeah, so go over there. I'm sure they can um, get in touch with you through that and probably learn some things through your website as well. It's, you know, we just spoke um, last week with a, a man by the name of Sam Sheridan. He's a novelist. He's traveled all around the world. And it sounds like you guys get to travel a lot as well, um, practicing your art form. And that's that's always an amazing, awesome thing as well. 
And uh, again, it's it's been great talking to you guys uh, again. And uh, do keep us updated on everything um, as it comes down the line. We 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 mention it here on the show, and we'll keep doing that. We really appreciate your time. Uh, anything you want our listeners to know about, we will gladly mention it here on the show. Awesome. You know that uh, the, the Taiwan World Cup, the fourth World Cup, just happened two weeks ago. I'm going to be receiving a video from the world champ uh, in, in the next, in the coming weeks. So I'll definitely shoot it over to you guys. Apparently the uh, the guy he fought for gold is from Canada. So I'm, I'm really excited to see, uh, to see the match. And, and uh, you know, I want to ex- expose it as much as possible just to get the, the word out on the high level push hands competitors. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, I'd love to share that with you guys. Yeah, do it's that. Pleasure yeah. I'll, I'll there. drop a link on the webpage and we'll, we'll put it all over our Facebook and stuff. Absolutely. And actually, one of the members, a uh, female member of the German team that competed in Taiwan this year, put gold in push hands, and she had come over and trained with us in preparation for her push hands. Yeah, and we're big. That's, that's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, we're big on. Um, that's something we're pretty big on around here as well is uh, showing women practitioners support because they're starting to get a little more attention, but for a long time, you know. I think they get they got neglected a little more as far as uh, getting attention when they deserved it. So, dude, I have absolutely stolen moves from uh, <laughs> Mavis, who's a tons of tons sister uh, out in Taiwan. She's an amazing practitioner of push hands, and and, and uh, you know to see her throw a girl across a ring seven feet with a little touch is mind blowing. So we we've totally taken moves and incorporated moves from watching her and 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 her girls uh you know go very hard. <laughs> In competition in Taiwan, they are. When we were there two years ago for the World Cup, we had the privilege of being invited to train with the with the top team in Taiwan, and they had started have started a movement to incorporate Tai Chi push hands specifically in grade school uh, curriculums, wow. from grade school up through uh, high school. Wow. And it's just phenomenal to see they had two years ago, and I don't know how many people they had in this last World Cup, they had over 60 competitors. And a lot of them were in uh, high school and junior high school. It was just phenomenal to see. Wow. Yeah, it's something. No, I don't know if I want everybody to know. <laughs> <laughs> I like being, you know, walking into a room and going, ha, I, I feel a little more safe than these guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a cool thing, though, to to see the kids getting involved and the young people. Uh, both of my yeah. kids are in martial arts. I think it's it's important. Um, they learn respect, discipline. I mean, all the things you've always heard, but it, it's true, and it keeps them active as well, which is something, especially in the United States, that more kids could benefit from is being active. So that's a, that's a really cool thing. Um, again, guys, uh, drop us those uh, drop us those video links when when you get them up, and we will gladly post them. And, and again, we really appreciate having you guys on the show. Wonderful. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. And uh, we'll keep in touch with you, and uh, we'll, we'll have you back on again here soon. Oh, we'll, we'll look forward to it. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk to you guys That's later. Good.